And Israel has to escalate. Israel has to commit these massacres because Israel is faced with two choices with Gaza. Fix the problem, allow the refugees to return, rebuild, or kill. Now, the first option is not acceptable because we don't want the Arabs back. We just got rid of them. Um, so that's out of the question. Uh, doing nothing is impossible. You have to do something about this disaster. So what Israel found is you can kill them and call them and, and blame them for being terrorists. And the world applauds. Applauds. I mean, it was, it's, it's incredible how Israel manages to massacre innocent civilians and the world says it's self-defense. You know, it's again, it's a magic trick. I don't know how the world, how anybody can be so gullible, so stupid to accept this, that this massacre of innocent, unarmed, harmless civilians can be, uh, can be called self-defense. Self-defense from what? So unless you've been living under a rock, you know, you might have heard about the ethno-supremacist uh, nuclear-powered um, regime that, that is called Israel that is trying to genocide the indigenous population, Palestinians. And uh, I've sort of posted recently um, a, a video which was saying that Israel was losing their grip on the narrative, on their propaganda narrative, that they are just defending themselves. And uh, they're saying that Hamas is in orphanages and nunneries, and recently they bombed a medical facility that makes uh, that 3D prints tourniquets and other sorts of medical, uh, um, medical instruments. So they bombed that. They bombed the Palestinian um, Child's Children's Fund, they bombed that building. They, as you know, they, they bombed the... Uh, and these are bunker buster bombs too, that just obliterate the whole building. They bombed the AP and Al Jazeera media building. They bombed that total building. And by the way, Ali Abunima is trying to raise funds for a particular... <laughs> Sorry, if this is shaking, it's because uh, Aoife is insistent on getting up on this chair. Um, Ali, Abunima, Ali Abunima is trying to raise funds for um, one of the journalists who's uh, lost all their equipment when they bombed that building. They bombed it in broad daylight, by the way. I'm going to get to a story of why I'm, I'm sort of talking about this, but I just wanted to mention these, you know, about the orphanage and about the nunnery being bombed and uh, this uh, medical supplies place and the Palestinian... Uh, children's Fund and all of that. Oh, and by the way, and they also bombed Medicines Sans Frontières as well. So they're basically, I think they, I'm not sure, but I think they may have bombed some parts of the water supply. I'm not sure about that one. I haven't looked into all the various uh, places they bomb, but they usually try and destroy infrastructure at any chance that they get. This is the government, the Israel, Israeli government. And they also try and, uh, and they're purposely targeting civilians. They're not even doing that double tap thing that they sometimes do, where they, they basically send a smaller... Um, smaller missile to to tap the building. Um, sorry, it's called, it's called roof tapping, not double tapping. That's another awful practice. So they haven't been doing this roof tapping thing. They've just been bombing whole residential buildings in the middle of the night and uh, killing. In one family, I think they they killed over a dozen members of that same family. And so basically, in broad daylight, uh, with the complicity of the U.S. backed the the government, the U.S. government, the Biden administration, they're um you know, doing a genocide as usual in broad daylight and there is no, um, there's no accountability. And on top of that, the Biden administration has, has recently pledged to give them $750 million on top of the $3.8 billion with a B dollars that they get every year. He's actually pledged more money for the, the military aid, more military aid. They don't need the money. They're a sovereign economy. They, they receive military aid. 
Um, so, so this is this is the response of the Biden administration to continue on as the U.S. usually does, funding the genocide of Palestinians, and in return, Israel does the U.S. proxy wars by bombing Syria, um, Mossad uh, sort of assassinate, helping with assassinations, and all of that kind of thing. There's a symbiotic relationship between Israel and uh, the U.S., and that's why we need to address Western imperialism. We need U.S. imperialism. We need to see the empire fall because that will. The minute they stop funding this genocide, uh, that's when uh, things will change in this uh, apartheid state um, So of Israel. So that's what needs to happen. U.S. imperialism and this apartheid, much worse than apartheid ever was, that, that is very closely connected. And uh, therefore, you know, if, if U.S. imperialism ends, that will also fall as well, the apartheid state. One would hope, anyway. It won't actually. F it won't actually fix the genocidal racism there, but it certainly will make a big difference when they're not giving them ten million dollars of military aid every day. So, putting that. So, I've just wanted to add. I just want to mention those various uh, various sites that the U.S. apart from the literal and precision bombing of residential buildings that they know are residential buildings, that they know Hamas isn't there. This is all a complete nonsense that Hamas is here and Hamas is in the nunnery, Hamas is in the orphanage, Hamas, 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 is is actually a, a marketing strategy that I saw, um, there was some secret documents revealed that a marketing uh, group was actually telling um, the, the Israeli public and also telling various... Um, Zionist, pro-Zionist pro organizations that you don't use the word Palestinian people, you use the word Hamas when you talk about this conflict. And so you use Hamas and you demonize Hamas, even though Hamas was actually an elected government, even if it may not be what all Palestinians want, it happened to be elected. And so they said, use that word Hamas. So that is a secret document, document that was revealed about um, why you'll hear this Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. It's a marketing thing. So... Um, to sort of basically deflect away from the fact that there actually is a genocide of Palestinian, the Palestinian people. So today I saw uh, on Instagram, this is what I was getting to, um, even though there was a long meander to that, as I tend to do, but today I saw one of the people I follow on Instagram is um, a, an, a, an account called Cheap Lazy Vegan, run by um, somebody called Rose, and she does some interesting stuff, um, diff different recipes and stuff, and she's not really political, and she really doesn't. She just it basically it's about plant based recipes. But about a year and a half ago, she went to Israel. She went to to uh, Tel Aviv, and she was meeting up with a a vegan group, and they were doing she, they were introducing her to all these different um, different wonderful plant based um, meals that they different ethnic meals that they were eating in that area. So um, people, some people criticized her for that, and um, and I actually at the time. And, and by the way, before I get into the rest of this story, Israel likes to present itself as progressive, in quotes. Uh, they like to pinkwash things, like making out that they're really gay-friendly, that they're, you know, they're really progressive because they're, you know, a lot, there's a lot of uh, vegan-friendly stuff going on there. There's all sorts of ways that they try and present that there's some sort of very open society. And yet, really, when you just scratch under the surface, a lot of people, a lot of Israelis, sadly, because they've been indoctrinated too. I mean, it's indoctrinated from when they're at kindergarten, and then they actually have to um, do service in the in the occupation forces in the IDF. Um, but they they're literally indoctrinated um, to hate Palestinians. That's the bottom line. I think that we need to. And you know that it's game. I don't know how to translate really well. I, I think we should give them a country. If you're doing any problem, you just go in there to give them a country, and then it's going to be a war between countries, you know? If they're going to throw rockets, we're going to throw one big one and done. I don't think there's any answer to it. Really? There's only one way, to, like... I would carpet bomb them. You would that, carpet bomb them? It's the only it's the only way you could deal with it. Like or or try to stop them a different way. It it never worked. You mean all Arabs or Gaza or anyone growing up in Israel, uh, I went through the whole indoctrination mechanism. And we are being trained to be soldiers from kindergarten. Literally from kindergarten. The moment I realized I, I managed to sort of overcome that indoctrination, then Everything became very clear because the situation is crystal clear. Uh, one of the main successes of Israeli propaganda is to convince the world that the situation is complicated. 
but it's far from being complicated. It's probably the least complicated conflict in the world today. Um, and, and it's all about basically those who have the power, those who oppress and subjugate and, and uh, trade over the indigenous people of land who have been oppressed and subjugated and expelled from their land. And this is what it's about. The situation here is not very different other than the way it is perceived in the world and among Israeli society themselves. They like to perceive themselves as some being something else, as being you know, liberal and progressive and all of that. And I also thought of myself as such, until I realized that actually, you know, this is not the case. The case is very clear, and I'm not on the right side of history. And, um, and that's when, you know, the moment I managed to overcome this type of brainwashing, then the rest was very easy. The so this one is all about creating a place which is for one select group and only that. It's not only the fact that they wanted to take over to usurp the land and the resources and all of that. It's also about this exclusive nature of the place, that this is ours and only ours. And even any, any Palestinian being born in Israel, even if they're Israeli citizens, is already regarded as some sort of a threat to the state. Mm -hmm. The need to segregate, the need to separate and not to interact with Palestinians is part of Israeli identity. So we have to understand that Israeli identity depends on denying Palestinian identity and denying either the existence of Palestinians altogether or at the very least denying their uh, identity, their culture and so on. And also, right after the ethnic cleansing of Palestine, right after the Palestinians uh, were expelled from their homes and became refugees, the very next thing that happened was that there was a concerted effort of mass looting of books and other uh, cultural artifacts from Palestinian homes, which was led by the uh, National Library in Israel. So, so it's for a reason that when we say existence is resistance for Palestinians, this is true. Just by very existing on their land, this is an act of resistance in itself. Even more so when they actually claim their rights, claim their identity, do cultural work, like produce Palestinian culture, that is an act of war. So, they, so Israel tries to project this very progressive kind of a state to hide the fact that they're committing this genocide of Palestinians and have been since 1948, since the state of Israel was established over the top of all these indigenous Palestinians in the Balfour Agreement. And, um, you know, it's, it's a whole colonialist pro project that's happened. So anyway, so that's, that's a side note, but just to, to let you know that this is sort of part of this, um, like the CIA does that, where they pretend like they're really progressive. They, they have sort of a a gay person talking about being part of the CIA and how great it is there and how, you know, intersectional and all this nonsense. And then, then they'll have, um, you know, sort of a, a Latinx woman talking about how wonderful it is and how her parents would be so proud and how intersectional and feminist and all of that the CIA is. Well, that's part of the whole, um, you know, sort of woke, and I hate that word, uh, is, is sort of how they use that, the CIA use that, to try and bring in new recruits pretending that they're very sort of woke in quotes and uh you know on just like the democratic party uses the squad and all of that to pretend like they're progressive so israel does this too they pretend that they're progressive by with saying how many vegans uh vegan friendly restaurants there are and that they're really gay friendly and they have gay pride things and all that kind of stuff it's it's sort of that's what they want to project to the public but underneath it all it's a genocidal uh, government that is trying to wipe out Palestinians by any means necessary. And sadly, they have the complicity with the U.S. empire and various um, Western imperialist countries because uh, everybody benefits from Israel being in the, in the, in the Middle East and, and uh, helping with the proxy wars. And as, as Joe Biden said once, um, if uh, we didn't have Israel, we'd need to invent, you know, we'd need to invent one, basically. Symbiotic, mutual back-scratching kind of thing. So anyway, back to this cheap, lazy vegan um, site. Um, and she, so she went to Israel. She did this uh, whole little tour with them. And she actually did a tour with a Palestinian uh, tourist group. Now, I don't know if they, they are people that are put up by the is Israeli government to present everything being just fabulous uh, with the Palestinians. I don't know what kind of uh, tourist group she went on. But um, I think she came back and she was kind of, she was seemed to be because she'd been getting some flack from going there, uh, which is a good thing in a way, as long as people explained why and, and weren't just being hateful to her. But she, she, I think she returned, and I don't know if she really understood what was properly going on. But I think she probably thought there was something problematic happening there. And if you've been taken on a real tour 
which some people actually get to do a real tour with Palestinians, they will see it's just screamingly obvious that there's a real problem there. You know, screamingly obvious apartheid is just oozing out of uh, everything um, at, at the very least. So uh, she came back and she seemed to, and I, I privately contacted her, I DM'd her in, on Instagram and pointed out Gaza Fights for Freedom and also the Empire Files with their seven amazing programs about Israel and, um, and the Palestinian plight. And uh, she didn't get back to me, but then she's got um, a lot of followers on YouTube and I'm sure there's heaps of people contacting her. So I don't know if she saw it, um, but I didn't hear back. So anyway, I just let, let it be there. I, I tried to do a little bit of education behind the scenes. And uh, so anyway, um, fast forward to now, and uh, I see her posting. Um, you may have seen the post I did a couple of days ago or three days ago about Subi on Instagram. He did a, a um, an explanation about the map of occupied Palestine. Well, it turns out that um, this cheap, lazy vegan, Rose is her name, Rose posted um, one of his videos, which I hadn't seen, but I assume if it's anything like the video that I, I posted about the explaining the map of occupied Palestine, that it was probably a good one. So she actually posted two videos in her stories, two videos about, about that without any commentary with it. And I thought, well, this is sort of an indication to me that even people who were, even people that had been there and they may have been taken around by so-called Palestinians to give them a tour and present everything as, as good. I don't know what kind of tour she got, but whatever happened between then and now, she's, um, she's obviously knows that there's something very wrong. And even if you're just paying a little bit of attention to all the children, 50 plus children now that have been, um, they've had bombs dropped on their families. Sometimes they're the only surviving, me sometimes children are these only surviving members or all the children have been, you know, like uh, four children from one family have been killed. But basically, it's very obvious with all the bombings of all these various buildings that I mentioned, plus um, targeting residential buildings and pretending that Hamas is there, which is absolute nonsense. And they killed a very important and prominent doctor who is, um, is very good at COVID medicine. All these different things are specifically done and targeting infrastructure, all these different organizations, the um, medical equipment organizations, the whole thing, the doctor who they've killed, who was prominent, a very well-respected and important doctor, he's been killed and his family. Uh, it's all intentional. There's nothing that they do that is an accident. They can pretend that it's unintended, but they have precision bombs. And all you have to see is even how, when I, if you've seen that video I did, that video I posted, which uh, showed the um, the roof tapping and then straight after that demolishing the building, bombing it and just raising it to the ground and then the building right next door. They are precision bombs dropped by F-35s. It's, the only, it's F-35s flying around and, you know, basically targeting residential buildings, targeting infrastructure, targeting medical facilities, targeting doctors that are prominent, um, killing whole families like, you know, over a dozen people in a family. All of these things are all part of the mowing the grass, which they, what's they call, what they call mowing the grass. And it's all part of basically making it impossible for them to rebuild, making it impossible for, uh, journalists to, to actually, um, document anything because they've destroyed the whole building with AP and, uh, Al Jazeera and all of that. So all these different, um, all these different things are so to further disable a country that, uh, a, sorry, a, um, the Gaza Strip, which is an open-air prison, basically, it's under siege and has been for over for about 15 years, and they can't rebuild because they can't get supplies in, to cement and all of that. They make it impossible for people to rebuild. They make it. They actually only give them four hours of electricity. They um, they pollute their water supplies, and basically, the UN has said that Gaza is going to be unlivable by 2020. That's what they said. Well, that will only further add to that awful situation for them. So they're basically squeezing the life out of this strip, which is under siege, siege and under blockade. It's an open air prison that they cannot get out of. And there's, it's densely populated with about 2 million people. Um, and it's, it's a very small area, like I think the size of Manhattan or something. I don't know. It's, it's actually a small area, densely populated. So, you know, it's like shooting, literally that awful species is saying like shooting fish in a barrel. That's what it's like. 
So anyway, what I what I was making, what I was pointing out about Chief Lazy Vegan um, and her p- position and how it appears to have changed from a year and a half ago or two years ago to now indicates that the narrative that the Israel apartheid Israel is uh, losing their grip on this propaganda narrative. Every time they do this, and it's sad that people appear to have to die before a lot of people have to die, including children, for people to sort of wake up. I mean, honestly and truly, why does it take something like that? But you have to bypass, we have to bypass the corporate media propaganda about Hamas, which is a marketing strategy, as I mentioned before, and um, the politicians who also employ that marketing strategy about Hamas. Um, and, you know, and of course, this whole uh, completely bypassing that that uh, the Palestinians have a right to defend themselves. They're an occupied, for, they're an occupied people, and occupied people have a right to defend themselves. And let's not forget that there's no COVID uh, vaccinations for them. That the Israel government has made sure that the Palestinians have not been vaccinated. That's a, a medical apartheid. So they they haven't been vaccinated. A lot of them. COVID is running are running rampant in some areas. They're also running out of oxygen supplies. And all this thing. So this will further complicate the COVID response, which is already um, in a desperate situation. It'll further, um, it'll further complicate a whole lot of things and make it even more unlivable if that is possible. And let's not forget that 50% of people in Gaza are actually unemployed, from what I understand. So anyway, but, but back to Rose. Um, so it appears that somewhere between two years ago where she was like, I don't know, you know, just seemed to be didn't want to say anything at all because a lot of people are afraid to say anything, particularly now since they pretend like it's anti-Semitic. They pretend like criticizing the Israeli government over their genocidal war crimes is anti-Semitic, which is just a nonsense. But you see that they use that on anybody who speaks out about this. They try and make out like you're anti-Semitic, which is just absolute nonsense. And it worked when it came to Jeremy Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party, that IHRA um, definition of anti-Semitism, which is if you criticize the, um, g- this awful, uh, genocidal state that you're anti-Semitic. So despite all of that, she's now starting, Rose is now starting to post these, uh, um, Subi videos, which are fairly clear from what I've, from that one that I've seen, and you've probably seen it a few days ago. And so that really indicates to me that people who used to be afraid, and also this is somebody who, has about 300,000 people on, or something like that on her. I think it's about 300,000. Or it might even be more than that. It might even be 800. I can't remember. She's got a lot of people on YouTube. Uh, people like that tend to avoid um, sticking their neck out at all and saying anything political whatsoever. They usually only do that when they think it's safe to do so. You'll find that with a lot of those YouTube influencers they use, particularly, um, you know, particularly people who are doing plant-based recipes. I won't call it vegan because a lot of them aren't. They're not doing. They're not. They're not vegan for ethical reasons. And of course, a plant-based diet. It's a lot more than a plant-based diet. It's rejecting animal exploitation. Period, in all its forms. But uh, usually, you know, a lot of those people who are just doing plant-based recipes, they will avoid saying anything political at all. Anything that is going to be controversial, um, they will avoid it. So the fact that um, Rose is actually on Instagram has actually posted those two videos from that uh, Palestinian who um, I mentioned is indication that it is becoming a lot more uh, mainstream to actually push back on the genocide by apartheid Israel by this nuclear powered genocidal ethno supremacist state on Palestinians, the indigenous people of that of that land, and that that is should um, give us some optimism. And also when you see. Uh, that the, the the marches that have been going on are, are like tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands, all over the place. Huge marches in in the UK and in um, in the US, and people are starting to put these struggles together as well. The people in I haven't mentioned this yet, and uh, because I've been taken up with some other things, but what's happening in Colombia with the you know three weeks of incredible um, protests against this awful neoliberal fascist sort of government. And uh, they're, they're not only um, they're not only um, they're, they're, their demands go beyond the original demand, just like the gilets jaunes in France. 
it goes beyond that, and now it's about neoliberalism. So there's all there's all sorts of it's almost like that hundredth monkey theory where where you get one group like it might have even been the gilets jaunes it might have started even with it might have been the occupy movement in 2012 which was shut down by obama it might have been the gilets jaunes but all these different things it might have been the constant protests that happen in the u.s meddled countries in latin america um all those all these different struggles uh can can cause other struggles to pop up and then people start to connect the dots um like the not not the black lives matter organization but black lives Ma the blm movement the blm they they connect the dots with um palestinians in their oppression so all and the colombian uh this what's happening in colombia they recognize the oppression of palestinians and this uh, awfulness that's going on all these different countries um can sort of uh particularly latin america they they understand the whole need for solidarity if we're if every country is isolated and no one is joining hands and trying to look at the that what is the real problem then nothing real is going to nothing long lasting is going to happen and that's why the empire us empire needs to fall because a lot of what is happening stems from us imperialist meddling in latin america and different like in colombia in in different countries there have been meddling since particularly since 1945 50 plus countries have their governments have been overthrown including my own, my um, Prime Minister Gough Whitlam in 75, the CIA admitted to helping oust him. He was the best Prime Minister we ever had. All that, and it's been a neoliberal mess ever since, as I mention um, frequently. Uh, so all over the world, U.S. meddling and U.S. imperialism has a lot to answer for. And so it's, it's imperative that all uh, these different countries come together, all the different, the people, the people come together. Uh, we're not going to get it from politicians. Politicians are... Uh, venal and they're, they're mealy mouthed and they will shut up when it comes to criticizing U.S. imperialism or, or apartheid Israel. They tend to just um, buckle under and because they, they love their careers. But it's about the people and what we do and, you know, that saying all power to the people. It's important that we all start to recognize these various struggles that it's all, we have a common, we have commonality and, and that's why the powers that be, the establishment, the one percent, the um, billionaires, the capitalist class, that's why they're all freaking out. And you know that, uh, as Lenin said, um, capitalism, uh, fascism is capitalism and decay. And this is why it's becoming more fascistic all over the world. That's why the U.S. is becoming more fascistic and, and our country here in Australia. Um, we're getting more and more fascistic wannabe, fascist wannabes starting to come up in the ranks like Peter Dutton who's uh, could end up being if the CIA has any involvement with it which I think they will he may end up being prime minister peter dutton is just awful he's uh, just absolutely grotesque and he could end up being prime minister of australia and we've already got um a problematic prime minister who's a um an authoritarian wannabe and is only interested in lining his own pockets in the pockets of um corporations and um, you know, and he's also, he's a, got a bit of a Christian fascist leaning. I think he might even believe in the rapture. So these are the sort of, um, all these, uh, this, this is not an accident that all this sort of fascistic type uh, tendencies are coming up and, uh, you know, and uh, expressing themselves with these various governments because they can see that the people are starting to wake up, that they can't control the narrative anymore, even with the completely controlled uh, corporate media that's just putting out government narratives. And if you've ever watched uh, one of the CIA, one a CIA person talking about how there's so many people now on the payroll because they had Operation Mockingbird, but even today, so many people and well-known people on the payroll that just basically take the notes of whatever the CIA put in front of them and then put that. Uh, so you know we're basically getting CIA talking points throughout the corporate media. So it's no wonder people are so propagandized. But but basically, even with that. Where people, it's it's very obvious to people what's going on now. I think, and it's becoming like that hundredth monkey theory, theory that all throughout the world these uh, different movements are popping up. Um, you know, in Latin America, of course, it's been going on for a long time in Venezuela and elsewhere. But you know, other people in Western countries, they're realizing that it's not about just black and brown people. It's about everybody. It shouldn't take things to get really bad for them and for the bad for them, for white people, for people to actually take action. But apparently, apparently, it does for some. But they can see that it's not even it's not even about um, black and brown people anymore. It's about everybody. Everybody is expendable. The po politics of disposability. I felt encouraged seeing um, Rose's post um, of that uh, particular Palestinian activist Subi because I felt like 
uh, for somebody like her who doesn't want to say anything controversial and uh, she's because she's afraid she might be penalised in her business, which is an online business as well as also her cafe with her mother. And so she feels safe enough to actually um, put out that particular narrative and that shows that even mainstream people feel that something is very, very wrong and they can actually access information that is not just corporate nonsense, corporate propaganda. And that's very heartening. So thanks for watching. My name is Trish Roberts. You're watching Faint Signals from Vega. Till next time. Um, Palestine will be free. Till next time. Bye for now.